This video will discuss the spectrum of the hydrogen atom quantum mechanical model system. So we've, dis we've discussed in our previous videos that the energy levels of our hydrogen atom model are going to depend on the principal quantum number n. So E of n equals minus mass of the electron times charge of the electron to the fourth over 32 pi squared epsilon naught squared times h bar squared times 1 over this quantum number squared. The quantum number n starts at 1, goes up from there, and is some integer less than infinity. All right, and the change in energy between two states is going to be the energy of quantum principal quantum number 2 minus the energy of principal quantum number number 1. This is also equal to the energy of the photon that is either absorbed or emitted to transfer between these two states, equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of that photon, or Planck's constant times the speed of light times the inverse wavelength of that photon. So this is typically in wave numbers, or 1 over centimeters, and if that is the case, then this speed of light needs to be in centimeters per second. If the change in n between the two states, n2 minus n1, if that's greater than zero, then we have absorbed a photon and increased our energy. If it's less than zero, then we have emitted a photon and decreased our energy. So nu bar here between states is equal to the Rydberg constant times 1 over n2 squared minus 1 over n1 squared. The Rydberg constant is all this constant stuff out in front. and the 1 over n squared comes from this final dependence on our quantum number there. The Rydberg constant is 109,737.3 wave numbers. That's the case if we put in the mass of the electron here. If instead we use the reduced mass of a proton and an electron, this value decreases by about 0.05% and gets much, much closer to the actual experimental value of the Rydberg constant. But for our purposes, we're happy just to use this value, which is the case if the mass of the proton were equal to infinity. All right, so we're talking about a spectrum. We're talking about transitions between two energy levels. So we need what are called selection rules. What are the allowed values of changes in quantum numbers between various states? So first is that delta S is equal to zero the change in our uh, spin quantum number is going to be zero. Well, we only have one electron. S is always going to be one half, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, delta L, the change in the orbital angular momentum quantum number, is plus or minus one. So S is L equals zero, L equals one is P, L equals two is D, F, etc. Those functions, as I have them listed out here, L equals zero. L equals 1, L equals 2, L equals 3, and beyond. And our final criteria is that delta J, the change in the total or angular momentum quantum number, is either going to be 0 or plus or minus 1. So let's see, based off these various states, what we can and cannot transfer to. So for looking at these states, just based off the values of L and transferring to something where the energy is actually different. So we have to change n because the energy is different, but we can change any n by any non-zero number. So we can go from 2p to, to 1s. That's a change of delta L equals minus 1. All these purple arrows are delta L equals minus 1 uh, and delta n equals minus 1. All these light blue arrows are delta L equals minus 1, delta n equals minus 2. The, the yellow arrows are delta n equals minus 1, delta L equals plus 1. And the orange arrow is delta n equals minus 2, delta L equals plus 1. Based off the selection rules of n and L, all of these kinds of transitions are allowed. We wouldn't be able to go from a 3d to a 1s, that would be delta L equals 2. We wouldn't be able to uh, go in here, this would be no change in energy if we stayed at the same n. So for our electronic states, which we represent by term symbols, which we discussed in the previous video, we can see that going from doublet S1 half to doublet S1 half would be not allowed because that is delta L equals zero. 
going from S to S is not allowed. Going from doublet P one half to doublet S one half would be allowed. That's delta J equals zero, delta L equals minus one. That's good. Uh, doublet P three halves to del doublet S one half allowed. Delta L equals minus one, delta J equals minus one. That's okay. Uh, doublet D three halves to doublet S one half would not be allowed. That's delta L equals minus two from two to zero. We're not allowed here as well. Any D to S transition is not allowed. Doublet D three halves to doublet P one half. Delta L equals minus one. Delta J equals minus one. That's allowed. And delta S equals zero. Doublet D five halves to doublet P one half. Not allowed. That's delta J equals minus two. Five halves to one half. Doublet D three halves to doublet P three halves is okay. Doublet D five halves to doublet P three halves is okay. And then anything going from an F to a P would not be allowed even though that's an allowed value of j, that is not an allowed value of delta L, being delta L equals minus 2. So these are just a few of the kinds of transitions that are allowed between hydrogen atom energy levels. We mostly take a look at our selection rules for whether our change in S, L, and J are allowed. If they are, we can calculate the energy change by looking at the principal quantum number and calculating that from the Rydberg formula for getting the inverse wavelength of the photon which is absorbed or emitted during that transition.